Professor Hines studies the effect of technology on teams, collaboration, and innovation. She's conducted extensive research on the dynamics of cross-boundary work teams, and particularly those spanning national borders. So welcome to folks all over the world. Um, Professor Hines, Pam, um, also has a body of research on human-robot interaction in the work environment and the dynamics of human-robot ro teams. And most recently, Pam has been looking at the changing nature of work in the face of emerging technologies, including the nature of coordination and open innovation and changes in work and organizations resulting from 3D printing and, other, um, and the work of data analysts. Before we begin, for our audience, please remember, you can enter in a question at any time, and I do encourage you to submit your questions earlier um, during the webinar. So don't wait until the last minute. Go ahead and put them in, um, and we'll go ahead and take a look at those um, as we're going through the webinar. With that, um, let's begin. Pam, welcome. So delighted to have you with us today, and um, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, Pam, would you discuss what you position think of is what is digital transformation? Yeah, great question. Um, and, and it's kind of a complicated question because there are a lot of different definitions that are floating out there and, and people think of it in different ways. Um, and it's different in different contexts. But I think that generally, and this is the way I think of digital transformation, is a radical reimagining of how an organization uses technology, particularly emerging kinds of technology, to fundamentally change their business models and business performance. Um, and that includes rethinking products, services, processes, um, and includes emerging technologies like AI, machine learning, um, the expansion of data, um, the internet of things, robotics, social media platforms, and so forth. So a host of different kinds of emerging technologies. Um, but the key for me in the definition is that it's not about incremental change. It's really this radical reimagining um, of what we are delivering um, in terms of products and services um, to our customers and how we are um, operating, you know, what our internal processes are for delivering those. Great, thanks. You know, with that in mind, um, you do talk a lot about culture. Yep. Why is that important to digital transformation? Yeah, I think it's it's critically important because, I mean, there, there's a lot of evidence at this point that organizations that um, successfully achieve digital transformation undergo significant cultural change, um, or they're a new organization that has um, a culture that aligns with um, what is required um, to operate effectively. And I'll go into more detail on that. Um, but the bottom line is it can't be done using um, existing processes, systems, and structures from a decade or more ago. And part of the reason for that is because it requires continual innovation. Um, continual meaning that, you know, it's not just, you know, a skunk works operation that comes up with a new great idea, but it's something that an organization needs to attend to on a really constant basis in order to, um, to stay up on these um, rapid changes in the technology and in the business environment. Um, and that means that there are fundamental changes in the organization that are required um, for organiz organizations to do this because historically, we just haven't had to move that quickly and be that externally focused. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that people ask is, well, isn't it really about getting good digital talent, you know, knowing about these technologies and being able to use them um, effectively in these transformations? Absolutely. That, that is a necessary, but not a sufficient condition for digital transformation. Um, because uh, you can get overly focused, and we, and we see organizations do this all the time, get overly focused on the digital piece, the technology piece, 
and not on the transformation piece. Um, and you know, we're really talking about, again, this more fundamental, radical change um, to the way that we do business. Great, thank, thank you for that. Um, you know, you talk about the characteristics and culture needed for digital transformation. And I'm gonna put up a slide that you and I had talked about uh, okay. that we wanted to discuss as part of this fireside chat. And it's kind of, it's the integral component. And you go into this in your, your course um, in the program. Can you talk about the characteristics of digital culture this diagram in particular and how it's fundamental for every transformation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so way, the way that this diagram came about is I read broadly about the digital transformations that were successful and were unsuccessful um, over, you know, a, a, I'd say decade long period. Um, and there's quite a bit that's written. There are a number of really good books um, that talk about you know, that, that provide these examples of organizations that have been able to do this successfully. And what I did was I distilled these into the five elements that you see here um, on this diagram. Um, one that's right in the center is being customer centric. Um, so I'll describe that in a minute, but also being nimble and fast, really focusing on voracious learning or a learning based culture unbounded collaboration and appetite for risk. Um, so those are the, the five that you see in this diagram. Um, customer centric is in the middle of the diagram because all of these capabilities, you know, nimble and fast, voracious learning and so forth are employed in service of providing customer value. Um, oftentimes through these new um, business models, but also new products, services and so forth. Um, so it needs to be, you know, the organizations that are most successful really focus first on what can be provided to the customer, what needs are out there that are not yet being met, that can be met through um, these transformations. So that's the customer centric piece. Nimble and fast. Um, the reason that that's on there is because the pace of change um, as we are embarking on these digital transformation requires rethinking the direction that we're going and pivoting regularly. We need to be in a position to be able to act on new initiatives without you know, spending a lot of time um, retooling and transitioning. So it's a combination of innovation and speed that are required. Um, and in order to be nimble and fast, oftentimes we need to rethink um, our organizational structures. You know, oftentimes our traditional hierarchical structures get in the way of being able to move quickly. They're, they're designed for reliability, not for speed. Um, and the same thing with our internal processes, approval processes um, and so forth um, can get in our way of being able to take advantage of these opportunities rapidly. Uh, the next one is voracious learning. Um, and, and basically what this means is having a culture in the organization that's really about learning and curiosity. Um, in order to drive new knowledge creation, um, you need to have people willing to um, you know, go out and, and figure things out, not just willing to, but passionate um, about going and learning new things and thinking in new ways, um, as opposed to, you know, again, a, a very traditional organization would be focused on hiring people who know what, you know, have the expertise that you need and then exploiting that expertise. In this new environment of the digital transformation, we don't necessarily know what it is um, that is going to be important, the expertise that's going to be required, and it's going to be new expertise that is developing. Um, so it's really important that we have a workforce that is excited about and supported in learning. Um, in terms of unbounded collaboration, um, what I'm talking about there is being willing to work, willing to and incentivized 
uh, for working across boundaries that are traditional within um, an organization. Um, so having cross-functional groups working together more actively. Sometimes it means working outside of the organization where you need to have access to expertise that doesn't exist within um, the, the organization itself. And this is important um, to digital transformation because these complex digital offerings often require bringing together very different kinds of expertise, different kinds of technology, um, and where we may have historically been, been able to do that in tandem, where you've got one group that works on it and hands over to another group that hands over to another group, um, and, and you know, there's this iterative process um, that way. That's just not fast enough anymore. Um, so what it requires is bringing all the right people into the room at the beginning um, and working through um, these ideas. And, and also that's, that's a way to um, come up with really new and novel ideas if people are really building on um, the knowledge and expertise of others. Um, and then finally, we have appetite for risk. Um, and what I mean by that is an organization that has a culture as well as processes, processes, incentive systems, structures, and so forth that encourage and support risk taking. Why is that important? Well, it's because um, people won't take risks. They won't innovate. Um, they won't try new things um, if they are afraid that they are going to um, you know, be punished in some way or embarrassed in some way um, within the organization. You know, they're, they're going to take a route that is safer for them. Um, so it's really important um, that people feel like that, that it's actually a good thing um, to try new things, even if they fail. Uh, what's important, though, about this is that it doesn't mean that everybody can just make mistakes um, in their work. Um, Amy Edmondson, uh, who's a professor at Harvard, talks about preventable failures. Um, these are things where we, we know how to do it right and we just got sloppy. That's not the kind of risk that I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about what she calls intelli intelligent failures at the frontier. And these are failures that provide new knowledge um, to the individuals and organization um, and are good for the organization. They're, they're actually learning opportunities uh, for the organization. Um, and particularly in cases when we, we actually don't know the answer in advance. We don't know whether or not um, you know, this new solution um, is, is going to work. We don't know whether or not there's really gonna be a market for it. So how can we, uh, experiment, fail quickly, um, and and move on. So I know I, I spoke a lot here, Anita, uh, but in you know, kind of in summary um, to your question, you know, I think that digital transformation is as much about the transformation as the digital, and the transformation piece requires really rethinking um, organization, culture, structures, and systems. Um, you know, and the way that people think about their work and work together. Excellent. Thanks, Pam. Um, sure. and, and thanks for, for going deep in some of these topics. So uh, really appreciate you expanding on some of these ideas. Um, next question. And um, uh, this is more of a, you know, say somebody is is not a digital transformation leader. They're, they're not leading an initiative or they're a member, but they're not necessarily the leader, or they'd like to learn to get involved or make change in their organization. So yeah. why is it important to learn about digital transformation? Even if you're not going to be the leader, but you will be a participant. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, and you know, my answer is that nobody's immune. Even if you're not leading digital transformation today, you're likely to be impacted by it. Um, and if not today, sometime soon. Um, according to the World Economic For Forum, no industry is gonna be able to avoid digital transformation. So, you know, if you're thinking that, well, I'm in an industry that it's not gonna affect, yeah, ultimately it probably will. 
or if you're in a, a role that you don't think um, will be affected or you'll be called on um, to respond to digital transformation. That, you know, it's possible, but there's a really high likelihood that it will affect every role throughout the organization. And, and one of the reasons is, if you go back to, you know, what I was talking about before in terms of the cultural change, cultural change, that's just not just in one part of the organization. The cultural change has to span the entire organization. Um, so it's, it's useful to learn, I think, about digital transformation so that you understand why the organization is shifting in the way that it is and, and actually being able to support and help the organization in doing that, even if you're not right now on the front line of some kind of you know, digital transformation in terms of a particular product or service. Um, you know, as I mentioned, even industries that are typically thought about um, as being low tech um, will be and are experiencing radical changes. Um, so it's important to be ready. Um, I actually, over the last few months, have been spending time at dairy farms. Um, and dairy farms, one of the, the new technologies that's coming in is new robotic milking machines. And they're just amazing. Um, you know, they, they're, the cows actually choose when they want to be milked. Um, and they go into this system and the system is complete with sensors. Um, there's a dashboard that the dairymen or women can use to monitor um, the health, the milk production and so forth of their cows. It'll flag whether or not there's a cow that they should go check on. Um, and they can do that from anywhere, you know, on an, on an iPad these days. Um, so, you know, even agriculture, which we think of as being pretty low tech, there are amazing things um, that are happening and happening rapidly and really transforming um, what it means to work in those industries. Um, the other thing I would say is that because successful digital transformation requires the significant overhaul um, of most organizational cultures, um, you know, as I said earlier, most employees are going to be affected at least to some extent. And if you understand um, those um, requirements, um, you can actually position yourself on the front end of those changes and help your organization um, instead of being surprised and potentially lagging behind. Um, and, and one of the things I'll say too, Anita, is in our digital transformation program, uh, what we've done is identified four courses that we think are really important for learners to start with um, that provide, you know, I, I think a nice coverage of the types of changes that are needed in organizations uh, for transformation ways to think about the different kinds of technological advances that might make sense for particular uh, organizations or contexts or applications, and importantly, how to effectively um, lead these efforts. Um, so those courses are, um, they all start with this X, D, G, T. I'm going to ignore that. First one um, is number 100. Um, and that is Foundations of Digital Transformation. And that goes into more detail on what I was talking about earlier in terms of those five different aspects um, of uh, the, the foundational culture that an organization needs. Uh, the next one I'll mention is 224, which is Building an AI-Enabled Organization. And this is a, a really, I think, fun course because it looks across a broad swath of industries at the different ways that AI um, can actually enable um, new products and services. Um, so that's, I, I, I find that course to be really kind of inspirational. Um, the other one is 223, which is building a product platform strategy to accelerate growth. Um, so in this course, we really look at products and kind of the, the traditional product strategy and platforms and how you bring those together um, in a way that is really aligned with what you're trying to accomplish and what the strategy is for the organization. Um, and um, Professor Eisner teaches that, brings in lots of nice case studies and so forth. Um, and then the, the last one I'll mention is, the, and the fourth one on the list, is uh, 111, 
Um, and this course is Systems Leadership, Managing Uncertainty in the Digital Age. Um, and this very much focuses on how to be a more effective leader when things are uh, more complex and more uncertain. Um, so that's one that, that everybody can benefit, particularly in this day and age. Thank you, and and thanks for talking about the, the core courses. That's something new that we've added to the program to uh, give uh, our learners, our customers, um, a, a learning journey that would uh, be appropriate for them depending upon where they are in their career um, and whether they're focused more on a managerial path or a technical, tra uh, technical track. Um, so that, thank you for expanding on that. Um, why we picked those four courses. And then I also do want to mention that um, on your screens, for those of you who are with us today, you can also see another opportunity. This is one of our first opportunities to invite uh, learners, customers to come to the Stanford campus. In late January, we're hosting a course on campus where you can learn from digital transformation. Our faculty members that teach in this program um, and you can learn more by clicking on, uh, there's a link there uh, for the uh, program, which is called Innovation Strategy in a Digital World. And our customer service can answer any additional questions you might have. Um, we have about five minutes left. And so I would love it if you would answer a question from one of our um, guests here today. Right. Um, this is, um, how do you overcome organizational resistance to transformation? And we, we know this one comes up a lot, um, especially when uh, the folks in charge um, uh, might not be aligned um, to support that change. Um, and uh, you know, you talk about risk. Um, right. Not only risk from the, 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 the the people that are actually going to make the change, implement the changes, whether it's managerial process, technology, but the executives that have to be comfortable with that risk. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, that, that's hard um, because for the type of um, change that I'm talking about, um, it really requires high level leadership. If you're gonna change your organizational structures, if you're gonna change your organizational culture, if you're gonna encourage and not punish risk, and that really does um, trickle down uh, from the top of the organization. In the absence of that, somebody who is sort of leading from the middle, if you will, uh, one of the things that has worked really well um, is what we call small wins. Um, and that is doing something lo more locally to prove out the importance of doing this. Um, so that, you know, cause, cause oftentimes the reason that people are resistant is because um, they are concerned about the risk. They're not convinced that it really is important or is gonna be successful or the organization can do it effectively. So to, to be able to prove that out in small ways with the resources that you have available um, is a good way to get people's attention. And then you can um, you know, publicize those small wins. Um, and hopefully over time, um, although hopefully quickly too, because things are moving quickly, um, get more um, support from leadership in the organization. And the other thing too, is to, to look for leaders that are supportive. You know, Even if there is some resistance, there are probably other leaders in the organization that get it. Um, so you know, uh, working with them as, as allies, as um, you know, a, a, a team that can kind of develop and um, champion um, these, these small wins and these changes. Um, I, I'm going to try and squeeze in one more question. Um, and, um, what do you foresee as the future of digital transformation? Oh yeah. Um, so that's the million dollar question. Um, and I wish I had a crystal ball, um, to predict, but you know, in terms of the, the, 
details of it, it it's hard because because these are innovations and we don't know right by the nature of um, what we're talking about in terms of transformation we don't know but what i can say with confidence is that um, we we can pretty much guarantee that there will be continued disruptions um, to organizations and to industries driven by these advances in technologies and these innovative new business models, products, services, and so forth that capitalize um, on those technologies and those advances. Um, and that includes everything that we're seeing out there, AI, machine learning, sensors, digital traceability, virtual and aug augmented reality, smart materials, robotics, um, and so on and so forth. And, and perhaps most importantly, the integration of these technologies um, for new products, um, services, and processes within the organization. Um, so I guess the two things, um, just to summarize, that I would predict is we're going to see continued disruptions, and we're going to see more and more integration of these technologies um, in order to affect the kind of transformation um, that, uh, that we're going to be seeing. Great, thank you. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to see if I could squeeze in one more, Jen, one more minute. If you if you had to do a, um, one last thing, a few words of why digital transformation in one minute. <laughs> why digital transformation? Um, why, why is it happening or but, yeah, why the yeah. program? Uh, why why the program? Oh, um, yeah, I guess it would go back to what I was saying earlier, which is this is an inevitability um, for for all of us, right? And, it, and it's not, you know, even in, in education, we're experiencing this, you know, it's, it is just, it is pervasive. And, you know, I, I, it is always better to be in the know and be able to anticipate some of these things so that so that we can get ahead of them and and have an impact and make a contribution and potentially even you know choose different career paths um, depending upon uh, where, where we think we can um, can contribute Fantastic. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for that last impromptu question to you. Um, I want to thank everybody who um, joined us today and um, your participation. The There will be a recording of this that um, will be uh, shared with you within a, a few days. And um, thank you again, Pam. And thank you all for joining us for this first of a kind uh, fireside chat um, for the Stanford Digital Transformation Program. And I wish you all a wonderful day um, and journey through your career. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. And thank you, everyone.